thank you everyone for joining. Um, we've got on uh, 19 people on this call, which is, I think, is a record for the Marketing Optimist Sandwich course webinars that we started tentatively before Christmas, but then we ramped them up um, once the virus kind of hit. Today we've got a special. So we're talking to Sarah Agar Brennan, Mark Walsh and Martin Gould, who've all been on Dragon's Den. Um, I don't know if, if I'm, I'm assuming you've all seen their appearances on Dragon's Den. We're not going to replay them, guys, so don't worry. Um, mm -hmm. So today we're just going to be talking to those guys and asking um, what it was like. Well, well first of all, why, why they thought they, that going on Dragon's Den would be a good idea for their business. <coughs> what it was like once they got on Dragon's Den. And then uh, what it was like after Dragon's Den, what's the after Dragon's Den world look like? Um, and, and did it help? And would they do it again? There's some more people coming in. Select more other people coming in. Um, so yeah, so we're going to kick off um so i'm gonna go to i'm gonna start with you sarah if that's all right so sarah tell us tell us a little bit about about the business you were running at the time and why you went on to dragon's den so um i was running a company called love one cushions at the time which is no more sadly um and quite frankly it was one of those things that i'd always said i'd never Ever do, and I'd probably been approached a dozen times over the years. And um, desperation would be the thing that I did it for. Um, it felt like it was a good opportunity to get not only investment but the contract, which was quite pivotal in the business. Um, and we were unsure as to which direction we were going to go in. Whether we were just going to go, you know what, we've had a really good run, we've sold a lot of cushions we'll go back to our day jobs or whether we were going to try and turn it into something more and then when that call came in and said you've got three I was like could this be a sign so I did it cool <laughs> that's short and sweet so um Mark Mark what 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 was your what was your kind of um motivation to go and be yeah. on Dragon's Den I'm fair hungry I think <laughs> I don't know I, I, um it was just, it, it seemed like a really exciting thing to do. Not many people get the kind of the opportunity to do it. I'd watched the program. Um, we were very, very early stage business. We just kind of launched. Um, we were still testing and we had people using. We had problems with, with the platform as such, but we also had lots of opportunities. And really, I was just looking at it as an opportunity to get the word out there. What, what that would do, I didn't really think through, truth be told. Um, and it all happened quite quick. So it was kind of, what was quite strange is they, they all, they kind of approached me to go on it. They'd seen us at a pitching event. And when they asked us, and then, you know, we still had to go through all the process of going through the, the screen test and everything else. But it wasn't like we were physically trying and trying and trying to get on Dragon's, Dragon's Den. It was, they kind of approached us and then we started speaking to them. They started speaking to us. And it was a very sort of gradual process. And by the, by the time, before I knew it, I was, on my way to the studios in Manchester about to film the blooming thing. So it was, it was all quite fast, but it was just, it just seemed a really exciting thing to do. And it's, it's, it's part of our story now. It's part of our backstory. Um, yeah. And everyone kind of, it's not, it's not always the first thing people ask, but everyone always asks and they're interested in what you've got to say. So it helps us tell our story a little bit. Um, and also to look at where we were then, and where we are now, it's fabulous. So. Great. So Ma Martin, Tell us a little bit about, about why did why did you choose to go on Dragon's Den? Oh, so for for me, it was just purely about um, you know helping us to get millions of consumers to see a product, and you know putting myself in a situation which I do frequently, where I push myself to the limit of my own capability. I don't know why I do it, but I do it, and I've got a track record of doing it, and I just wanted my chance to be in that spotlight and face that grilling if you like so consumer growth pushing myself we actually got asked to go on the show a bit similar to mark in 2018 qualified for filming but turned it down that was shortly after we got an offer from go compare went back and obviously the producers seemed to remember that we turned them down and um, wanted to use it as a bit of a revenge opportunity um, but for us, it was all about growth. And, and again, you know, it's one of those things that I think Sarah said it, you know, it's one of those things that you think you'll never do. But when you get approached for the opportunity, it's like, yeah, let's go for it. 
so what what was the process like um before you actually qualified to get on qualified to get on dragon's den what so was, how does how did that affect the business yeah so we literally weeks and weeks of form filling due diligence questions from researchers who struggle to understand business they're all pretty young and want a career in tv so the overhead on the business for two years because remember <laughs> we applied twice um was incredible probably if you want to put it in hours probably about 300 hours of work to get through due diligence and obviously you go you need to go and pitch in a studio as well um so and before you go on the program you need to pitch to get on the program so <laughs> yeah massive overhead guys and probably um mark and sarah found the same to be honest so what's what, what what was what was your experience of kind of the, the even before you got anywhere near the program i remember coming um sitting with you and doing like a, a pitch run through with a few other people before before you went on yeah yeah it was quite intense i, I can echo what uh, martin said there was a lot of due diligence <clears throat> um and i think it was good in that respect that because it really puts to our paces but i think the inexperience potentially of the team meant that we were we were going over things quite repeatedly like numbers and having to really break it right down so it was a huge strain on the team because we were a very small team um, and we pretty much put somebody kind of full time on just kind of um, answering those questions and, and regurgitating information in a format that they'll understand better um, so it's quite intense um, and then I think the pitching we'd already we, we were all eSpark people so we'd already kind of gone through a process of learning to pitch so it was just kind of refining a pitch and I know Colin um, Colin Glass kindly let me go along into the offices and just randomly pitch to people and put me through my paces and you did Richard and a few people did so although at the time you didn't know why I was doing it that's why I was doing it and <laughs> um, it was because I knew I was going on there and I wanted to kind of challenge myself and put myself in front of different people because when I went to the audition um, yeah it was interesting being in front of a camera pitching and it was very different experience to being in front of people so um i definitely struggled at audition stage and i knew i, I needed to to work on that so i was working on the pitch and making sure i knew my pitch and i was being calm and delivering it slowly and it was precise um they didn't like my initial pitch so they ripped it to shreds which didn't help either so i was kind of sat again a little bit um whilst carl and the team were kind of like just jumping through all these hoops um with the numbers it was intense Mark, 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 how did that affect you? What did, why did yours work like that? Um, is that uh, as uh, both Martin and Sarah said, it, the, the due diligence you have to go through. So if ever, everyone thinks about applying for it, the it, what starts off as a few phone calls then ends up into mountains and mountains of paperwork. It was pretty much at one point that there was at least three times where I said to them, "Look, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through with it. It's it's just too much. I'm trying to work on other things. I'm trying to think." They were like, "No, you must go through, and you can get to this point." And and they were really, really coaxing you into taking part and being part of it. And um, the pitching side of things, like Sarah said, um, I, you know, we were all part of eSpark at the time, you know, so uh, like there's Tim on this call and a few other people and we were pitching like mad every two minutes. I remember driving through Wales and I had a meeting in Wales the day before and I had my pitch on my phone and literally I spent for about three hours driving just listening to my pitch back and, and then saying it back and then listening to it back and saying it back and by the time you've done it a hundred times you kind of like you, you, your brain's a bit dead with it all so there was so much um, preparing and then Sarah says the numbers one of my biggest fears was getting on there and someone saying you don't know your numbers and I don't know why but that was what was stuck in my head so I spent so much time looking at numbers where we were where we were going to go making sure we're in the right position and it takes up a lot of time yeah okay so so st sticking with you mark i'm not mm. gonna let you have a breather what was it like actually being on the show when it when it came to it when you had gone through all that and they gone right okay today's the day what, what was that like right best way to describe it is imagine imagine the four worst teachers you've ever had at school right? <laughs> imagine the hardest job interview you've ever been in, into your life then put yourself in that situation. Then stick about 100 cameras in your phone, and when you can hear them whirring and everything else. Then turn the heating up to about 150, and then say go. Pretty much that is what it's like. What you see is what you get. What you see on that show, there's no cut, there's no start again, there's no, 
you know, do you want to do that bit again? None of that completely. Literally, you go in there and literally you are riding by the seat of your pants. And it was, you, you've got a minute to prepare and, 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 and compose yourself as such. They leave you outside for a long time before you walk out of that lift. Um, but everything, everything that you see is filmed in real time, apart from the bit where you walk out the lift because they have to have a camera in front of you to do that. So they, they, they do that bit. I don't know whether I'm allowed to say that, but that's the bit that they do. <laughs> You're ruining um, the magic. I'm ruining the magic. But the, well, also, I could ruin the magic about the lift because that's just some big fellow with a big button that does that. And it, <laughs> um, so it, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it, was, it, was, it was thoroughly enjoyable, though. It really was. I mean, I was in there for an hour and a half, um, just short of, and they only show you 15 minutes. So yeah. you can imagine, you know, the, the, the stuff that you go through. But um, one of the things that they, they asked, I had in my head a load of questions, which I was confident they were going to ask me. They were going to ask me about my numbers. They were going to ask me about, um, you know, how can I value uh, the business at what it was. They were going to ask me about IP. They were going to ask me about, um, you know, how can I get to market so quick and so on and so forth. They didn't ask me any of them. They ask you the most obscure questions that you would never have thought of. Um, and everything that I had in my head ready to be answered, they didn't ask me. Really? Kind of like you were hit quite hard, quite often. And you can see the cameras or you can feel the cameras move. So you could see when it was Jenny's bit. You could see when it was Tuka's bit. You could see when it was um, uh, when Peter's bit was there. Because they ask you a question and then everything goes silent. And then you can almost hear the cameras moving to you for your reaction. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. But um, you need to have, um, yeah you need a good lie down after it <laughs> um, Ma martin what was what was your experience like actually on the show and um, probably really different to mark so we filmed on the first day of the new series of the filming sorry daughter's just come in and we filmed on the first day and we were the first person to be filmed on that day so the studio was absolutely freezing um what that meant is the dragons were really annoyed um and kept asking the producer questions like why is it so cold in here? The producer answered why it was so cold in here because we didn't think to put the heating on to warm the building up. So I was on the back foot from the start. Uh, the cameras were rolling continually, as Mark said, and a lot of the footage, particularly around my numbers, which I knew like the back of my hand, just wasn't used. And I think the fact I knew my numbers so well just really annoyed Peter, um, which came across in the bits they did use. Um, I was under the spotlight for an hour and 36 minutes and I was freezing cold too. So it was, uh, it was difficult. Let's say that there were some moments of humor and some good stuff, whether that came across on telly, not sure, probably not. Okay. So Sarah, what, what was, how was your experience? Um, yeah, probably very similar. Um, kind of recognized that it was a show tv show before i went on it but then probably didn't realize until i was actually in the studio how much of it was staged um so that was quite intense and um, don't wear a lot of makeup they clarted me up with makeup made my hair all kind of bushy and i was like oh my god so that was like these things are just like unnerved and then you're going for pre-interviews um and it's all just building up attention isn't it before you actually get in there so you might be like a couple of hours going through the whole process before you get to the room so you're, you're, you're just nervous by the time you get there. Um, again, what Mark said, you're there for like an hour and a half plus, sometimes up to two hours. I think I was just over an hour and a half. Um, it was a Friday afternoon, so nobody was feeling it, as you can probably imagine. Everybody's desperate to get off. And I think I was the second last week of filming before it wrapped um, for, that, for that whole series. Um, and, and, and it's a bit like, now I look back at it, I can see what they do. And after watching Mark's and martin show they just they just go at you constantly to fire questions at you until they find a weakness then the second they find the weakness they like hone in on that and then that becomes the whole focus see all the things you prepare for every eventuality never actually happens because the second they find a weakness in in your personality <coughs> exploit it um, and those are the bits you see that's the drama isn't it so for me yeah. um they kind of picked up that I'd had previous businesses and why I'd never made my millions. And at which point I had to then say that probably one of my most successful businesses kind of folded, not so much folded, but I wound it down because my son had died. Yeah. And of course, I spent like 18, 17 years at this point, not really telling that story. 
and then suddenly I told four million people. So to yeah. say I was traumatized was like the understatement of the century. I was like, I just, and, it, and it's funny because as soon as you weren't like your phone, but when I went out and put my phone on, there was just so many texts from people going, why on earth did you choose? Like I, I text like to say, oh my God, I've just told the world that this. And they said, why did you choose to do that at that point? And the, and the point is you don't choose, they, they gorge you. Yeah. There is no choice in the whole matter. Is you're just getting prodded at all the time and poked. Um, yeah, and it's the and it's the survival of the fittest, really. Those who can keep the cool, farewell. Yeah. Luckily, I was edited well, I think. Yeah, yeah. So how, how did how did you think the? Because obviously you guys have all been on all been through East Park. I can see Natasha's up up there, up at the top. Now Natasha's joined us. Um, so how does it? Obviously, from the pitching sessions we have to do, we used to have to do at East Park. What, how did it feel differently? Because I used to hate those pitching sessions. I mean, I just, you know, I, mean, I, I just kind of talk and talk and get through it. But I really, I, I, I used to have sweats about those and they weren't even clients or potential investors even. So how, do, how does it feel? What's the difference between doing pitching to the Dragons as opposed to like doing a Shark Tank or doing uh, the kind of the eSport pitching sessions? Um, for me? Yeah. Yeah. Um it's completely different, completely different. I think it's the concept that you know that you're being filmed and that's then going to go out and air. And actually, you sign a lot of your rights away so you don't get to see it before it goes out. So you really don't know how they're going to edit it. And they do prepare you for that. They do say, you know, we will edit this. Um, and they, they don't confirm they'll be favourable or not. And you know from past experience and watching the shows that they don't, they're not always favourable. So you, it, it's, it's nerve-wracking because it's how they then can put that together and they can show whatever they want from that hour and a half. And yeah. as you've seen, they can rip you apart as the process of the editing. So for me, yeah, and it made actually going back out to pitch again, which I did and I started pitching after that for investment. And actually ironically now I, I coach pitching. Um, it's, it's just so much easier in front of people. Because you get, it just is, it just, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. Maybe some of you guys can help elaborate that a bit more. Yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed it. Um, it was, I, well, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the pitching. Um, one of the things, I, I, I waffle like anything. And I, if you, on my TV, on the, when I did it, Deborah actually had to cut me off because I was in danger of pitching for about a week, I think, about what I was doing. Um, but I, I had the pitch down to a T. I was absolutely certain. When I, I got there at six in the morning, I was uh, in the studios. I pitched at six in the morning to the, just some of the studio staff and, and some of the runners and so on and so forth before we, you know, before we actually went onto the television. That was perfect. Everything was fine. And as soon as I got into the Dragons then went out there, I just couldn't show up. Um, and, I, and I kind of like, like, the pitch kind of went out the window a little bit. So I kind of pitched a lot and then talked a lot. But as Sarah said, you know, they can edit it how they want to do that. You've got to, you, you must, you know, you, you have to be acceptant of that. Yeah. One of my biggest fears was, was coming across as arrogant. And I was really f fearful of being seen on TV as someone who knows it all and, and, and is, is arrogant and this, I, you know, because I'm, I'm quite, I, you know, I, I, I resort to humour quite a bit and I like to have a laugh and a bit of banter and, and so on and so forth. And that's just my character and the way that I am. And when, as Sarah says, they're coming at you quite a lot with a lot of stuff and, you know, and I would talk with humour or, 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 you know, with, with, with some facts or figures, they, they keep biting, they keep biting at you to try and get you to react. And one of the things that I regret a bit about my time in there that I didn't do is I became quite passive. I became quite fearful of being argumentative or, con, or, or getting into a confrontation with one of them for fearful, because you are aware of the fact that there's loads of cameras around you. Yeah. So it didn't, you know, and I almost became quite, you know, they were saying things to me and I was almost saying, yeah. And, you know, there was no real reaction. At one point, Peter said to me, I, Peter asked me what would happen if he got a text message during the game. And I made a joke about me not having as many followers as him on Twitter. And he basically, which wasn't it, but he basically turned around and looked at me sternly and says, that wasn't what I asked you. Now answer my question. And it, 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 it was really really you you, you they, they know exactly that they've done this hundreds of times and they will get the reaction out of you that they want so if you don't react they kind of give you their own spin on it i yeah. think if i've reacted more what would have been shown on tv would have been quite different I think. yeah how about how about you martin what's your what's your thoughts 
Um, yeah, so just, I mean, in terms of the, my pitch, my, my pitch was really good. Um, is it really different to any other pitch I've done? Well, obviously, being on telly with continuous cameras filming, the stress that you're under as an individual is absolutely huge. And until you've done it, guys, you'll never appreciate how much adrenaline is going through your veins when you stand on that X and you start to pitch. Um, I was concerned about little things like I took the wrong pair of glasses with me and I was like, oh, my God, these don't fit me properly. Am I going to be able to see? But I got over that. My pitch was actually shortened when they broadcast the show, which was fine. Um, like Mark, you know, the one thing that comes out of it is you're full of adrenaline. You want to come across as a reasonable, confident entrepreneur that's, you know, clever, but you don't want to be a dick. And because you don't want to be a dick, sorry for the language, you're probably a bit more compliant than you are in real life. And yeah. I'll tell you that I've been in front of the board of the company that bought Waibu Carphone Warehouse, everybody knows. Um, they were very, very surprised about how resilient I am now in real life because they thought on TV that was me. Well, obviously it wasn't. I had to say to them, that wasn't me. That was a TV version of me. This yeah. is the me you are seeing today. Um, so yeah, people get the wrong impression, which shows yeah. you just how disjointed TV can be, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Interesting. So when you went on, Martin, did you go on thinking, did you have a particular dragon in mind that you wanted to get? And, and how did you work out which one that was apart from, unless it was really obvious, it might've been really obvious for you. Um, so I, I, I didn't, um, I didn't. And I'll tell you why, because when you get to the stage that we got in Waibu with the volume of external st stakeholders and shareholders and investors that we had, because we raised quite a lot of cash, everybody seems to be able to think they know the answer. So I had news from here, news from here, review from here, review from here. This is what we're doing. What we're... All I was interested in is getting through the day, implementing the strategy that we agreed as a board and seeing what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody says you should go for Peter, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually that wasn't part of my plan. It was getting through the day, getting that PR for the product and see what happened after that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Mark, Mark, did you have any, did you have your eye on a particular dragon before you went in? Um, no, not really. Um, to be honest with you, it was more a case of a bit similar to Martin. It was making sure that I represented the us as a company and me and I did my family proud kind of thing. It was more, yeah. it sounds a bit, bit of a, a fuzzy answer but you know we, we were just more it, I was more making sure that you know we were represented right you know we got our story across right um, and then the, the whole point of a, a dragon coming on board was kind of an afterthought really you know I didn't yeah. really think of any particular dragon if I did I did look at I did research all the dragons themselves um, you know so and what you did was I actually asked them quite a few questions as well um, out of all of them in there um, Deborah was the one that I got on with most, even though that didn't really come across in the in the TV. Deborah seems to be pulling a lot of the strings, to be honest with you, uh, in the in the actual TV studio as well. Um, Peter was really arrogant and stank of cigarettes, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but he was he, he was a nice enough guy, but he was very arrogant. Um, Tuka seemed very sort of uninterested, really, uh, in, in being there, or whether he was interested in me. It, be fine. Tez was a lovely fella. Um, had a really good conversation, really good chat with Tez. Uh, uh, and Jenny was a, a nice lady, although she was quite quite harsh to me in, in, in different parts. Um, but I didn't have an idea of a dragon. I was more concerned with making sure that I represented us as a yeah. and the guys that I've got, you know, our team, making sure I did all the, all, all the team proud and yeah, I'm proud rather than think about a specific dragon. Or something. Yeah. Sarah, did you did you have a specific target in mind? Well, I did, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, I went in there thinking, yay, Deborah Meaden, fancy it that. And then she just completely hated me from the minute we got going. And <laughs> I don't know if everybody, and, and to this day, if you type in Sarah Gar Brennan, Dragon's Den, that wagging finger comes up. It haunts me, that wagging finger. So, yeah, so she just took a dislike to me straight away. It was like, there was, it was a case of, nah, we're not going here. This, this woman's a fool. So, um, yeah, so I, did, I had it in my head, it was her. And as it was, I got off with off. To Taj Levani, Jenny Campbell, and um, Peter Jones. And Peter Jones scared me. And actually, looking back now, you kind of like, ha 
having no knowing how it all worked out and how I got to the stage I am now, I, there has been moments over the last year where I've gone, I wonder where I'd be if I'd have gone with Peter Jones because Peter Jones was quite explicit at the end when he said, "I want you all to myself. I want. I don't. I'm not. In, he kind of pretty much said he's not interested in the business. He's interested in me as a as a as an entrepreneur." Um, Yes, I did, I did kick myself a little bit that I, I scared away from Peter because he was huge, hugely tall. He, you do see him smoking a fair bit and he was incredibly intimidating in his kind of demeanour. Um, yeah, and I buckled, basically. <laughs> so I guess my, my, the, the next bit I want to talk about is kind of what, what happened kind of after. And part of that was, I, it's not a great reveal, it's all been on telly now, but I guess you, you've obviously said that you, you on the TV, you got investment. On the TV, yeah, on the TV, on yeah, the TV. on the TV, I got so, offered. Yeah. So tell us about that. How did how did that work out? So cameras stop rolling. You've got your investment, yeah. uh, supposedly. Cameras stop rolling. Then what happens? You get a cuddle, which was nice because at this point I'm shaking like shit. Excuse my French, <laughs> but I am. Oh, and my God. knees are knocking under my dress. Good job I had a long dress on because had they showed my knees, they'd have just been chittering together. And then um, I got to go to behind the scenes and I got to their, go to their dressing room and, and meet them. And they were super excited, couldn't wait to get going. Um, Taj said he had so many contacts in. He knew the guys who owned Peppa Pig and all this stuff. And he kind of made it sound like, yeah, we can turn cushions into anything. This is going to be amazing. Then he said, you can't wait to work with me. Um, yeah. And then it, it was a very different story after that. We got given... Um, uh, angel investor dude um, called Stefan. Um, Stefan by name, Stefan by nature. He was from London and he was absolutely, he was a ball breaker, he really was. And he then stepped in and said, right, you know, you don't get to talk to them again now, that's it. You go through us and at which point I report back. And so he became this the middleman and it was intense. And Colin Glass will tell you, it was just intense. The whole process was, he's giggling now because he knows it was just intense. The whole thing was intense for about six, eight weeks afterwards. And we'd done all the due diligence anyway, um, but they'd stepped it up by 10. Um, and then they started talking to people and quoting conversations. And it was just, it was bizarre. It was like we were getting whittled down almost a little bit. Um, and then eventually we got a phone call to say, um, we'll be up in a couple of weeks to see you. And that, that just made it sound like it was all going to happen and it would be fantastic. And, um, and he literally came up from London <laughs> to tell us we weren't successful getting the investment. Um, but thanks very much. We'd laid on food as well. I literally whipped the sandwiches away and went, get out. <laughs> get out. So, yeah. So, so they, gave you no, they gave you no indication that beforehand? <sighs> on the that, contrary, that... they gave us the indication it was all going ahead. It right. was very very bizarre to say the least and i can't even i mean there's no regrets there's never any regrets in your life you can't regret things you've done and i don't regret it i've getting so much from it as a person but when i look back and i have done at that few months it was just it was just bizarre bizarre the yeah. way it all happened and the way they went about it and so are you are you allowed to talk about why 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 it didn't go ahead no, I can't, right. because what happened then was what, they then dangled a carrot to me, and without going into any detail, because I can't, they dangled this carrot to me, and I had to take a decision to take the carrot and sign another NDA, and this NDA was intense, and this NDA would have allowed me to tell the whole world, well, if I hadn't signed it, I could have told you all why you should never do Dragon's Den, and instead, I... I sent it to Colin, I sent it to my business mentors, I sent it to my legal team, and they just went, it's horrendous, Sarah, don't sign it. Bizarre. It's bizarre more than anything. And um, But the carrot was so big, I thought, oh, it's like your booby prize. So I took the carrot, and actually, turns out the carrot was just dust. And oh, they conned wow. me, and I'll say no more. Ducking out now. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. So, Mark, what was it like? How, how was your experience compared to sarah's because obviously you you had again i don't, I don't want to ruin it all but you had a slightly different outcome on the screen to what sarah had yeah i didn't get investment um which was a, a different outcome it was completely different to sarah's in fact it was quite funny so afterwards um the practical is over to take you you walk back out into the lift that is not a lift you then walk back out through and then there's a person there and the, the one of the runners are there and they take you up to another studio um and you do your outtake or your 
uh, out interview uh, where you just give them a little bit of an interview about you know what you thought life was like in the den and then literally um you were then shuffled downstairs in the corridor um and at one point in the corridor that i was in the dragons were actually coming out for their lunch break um, and they actually made me stand around the corner so <laughs> did not get in the way of the dragons or not see or speak to the dragons as they were walking out I was then put into a room and given a cup of tea. It was like coming out of an operation. Um, and then um, I was basically told to go down this other corridor uh, and I found myself out in the parking car park <laughs> where my stuff was handed to me. It was like when you were leaving, it was like, like leaving the hospital after an operation. Or, 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 right. And then they, would, they gave me my stuff, um, which had been left upstairs, almost in a box. And they basically waved me off and off I drove into the sunset. And wow. I was, that was it completely. I mean, one of the things, and I, I, I know you haven't asked this question, but I'm sure it'll come on to it, was that um, it, it was very, nobody gives you any training for what happens when this thing goes out on television. Yeah. Um, and there's some stories I can tell you about when it goes out, um, and I'm sure Sarah and Martin will tell you the same ones, but you're not, leaving the, the show and driving home and getting back to my, to Holly and Kit and Nadia and the kids and, 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 and you know, and speaking with, with John and Chris and, and the rest of the team and saying, look, you know, that's how it went and, and that's all okay, it's fine. Then you've got the period in between and then you've got the bit where it goes out on television. And the bit yeah. after that is probably one of the most interesting and exciting parts of the whole journey. But in contrast to Sarah's experience, they couldn't get me out of there quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, again, it was, it was all... You've got to take it for what it is. You know what it is. You know what you're in for. You know that it's a TV program. Um, I wouldn't change like Sarah, but no regrets. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, the, afterwards, it's a case of... Anyway. Okay. We'll, we'll, come, back, we'll come back to your question, to that, that one you posed yourself in, in, in a second. I just want to ask Martin. Martin, what, what was it like for you? Um, um, pretty, si pretty similar to Mark's, really. So, um, you know... I think the production crew were just so afraid of Peter moaning every minute that he was cold and why is it so cold, blah, 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 that, that I left the studio, did my finishy thing, you know, what are you going to do, blah, 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 and then it was exit stage left, you know, no care, just there you go, here's your stuff, blah, blah, blah. Thankfully, Paul, my co-founder, was with me because I felt like I'd been in kind of an out-of-body experience. So right. we, um, we walked to Weatherspoons and just got hammered and tried to kind of <laughs> deconstruct what happened. Yeah, we were in Weatherspoons at, at midday, all TV makeup up and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happened to us. Right. So it's, we, we've, had a, we've had a couple of questions coming in and this one kind of leads, leads on to that. So I, I, again, I remember speaking to Sarah at the time. Um, and you were kind of be told to get ready to move to new servers because you were going to end up with loads of PR coverage because of you being on, 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 the, on the TV and, and, and mm. kind of the date went out and all that other kind of stuff. So, again, how did that affect, I guess, for all three of you as well, how did that affect stuff? So, Sunday night, TV show airs, what happens to, what happens to your website, I guess, and your phone and everything else, which is kind of after this period of you, fil you finish your filming and then several months later it actually airs. What happens? What happens when it when it airs? What's that like? So for me, um, we did get a bit of help with the server side of things, and um, because we were still under the the NDA and ultimately under that whole in that whole process of although we hadn't got the, the back in, they were still keeping an eye on us. So we got um, a tech team in in Europe that to to help us and assess what the best route forward would be for the night to keep our website stable um, and gave us some advice on that. So it was good in that respect. Um, but we had to, in the end, we had to put a queuing system in because it was the only way it would have not taken the website down. Um, they, had, they were quite good in that. I don't know about you, Mark and Martin, but they were quite good in giving us examples in the past of where websites had had that peak while the show was on airing and they just collapsed. So they really did advise you against trying to kind of stabilize your website um but yeah for us it was it was okay um we, we did get a bit of support around that with regards to the pr um i couldn't afford really we got offered some services but they were astronomically priced for, uh, for us as a small business so we had to make a decision and so we did our own pr and um some quirky ways to kind of like um get some 
and I think locally we did quite well. Um, I think it was debated on Newsnight, my, our episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, it was basically the, the debate was is news is is Dragon's Den becoming like X Factor because I got quizzed about and I told them a bit about my story about my son dying, yeah. um, which unnerved me massively. Um, and then it was like we we were on Gogglebox as well the following time. You were on, I remember being on Gogglebox. Yeah, Gogglebox kind yeah. of massively boosted and helped us as well. And so, and so did, did that did those two did those boosts and actually straight after the show did that actually help sales at all? Yeah, I mean obviously, yeah, you've suddenly got ten times ten, maybe even times twenty traffic going through your website, and um, so inevitably it, it was good. But it was only good for a couple of days. I think we right. had a peak. We had a peak the night it went out for a couple of days, and then a peak for Gogglebox, and then we had a peak again when it aired again the second time it aired that week, and yeah. then yeah. that was it really, and it was gone. It was like there, and then it was gone. Right. And so, how how about you, Mark? How, how did how did it how did it affect you? Did, did did you get the same kind of spikes, the same kind of interest? Yeah, similar really. So we were sat watching, um, and I remember uh, I was sat with my with my wife and the kids and we were sat watching it and um, we had uh, a number of things open so we had the computer open which was showing all our activity and like Sarah says a massive spike and um, one of the things I remember I mean uh, my dad was watching it with us and we were, we were talking about it and we were thinking, right, okay what we'll do is we'll get more people in the next day so we can man the phones and we, we'd, we'd already worked with our dev team to make sure that we had enough space so we're pretty confident on that um, but it wasn't as dramatic as it as you would have thought it wasn't like a massive spike in sales and the phones didn't stop ringing there was lots of people ringing with lots of strange inquiries there was people signing up for accounts and various other things but we were very early stage truth be told we weren't really set up to have that amount of publicity at that point um but you know we we, we took it we, we basically did the best of what we got from it um, and we did get a lot of people that wanted to know about us and still now and um, so it's gone out on youtube um as our episode now and um if you want to laugh have a look at some of the comments under my video because like one of the things that we were prepared of you know when it is um it's not just the interest that you get specifically from businesses it's the interest you get from other people so we had a competitor and we're not really competitive they're a hardware based solution but they took it upon themselves to suggest that um, we had um, written them off and we were doing this and they're not the, we're not the original and various other things. And they literally set up a campaign which just went all over and people were emailing us and saying horrible things about us, to be honest with you. Wow. Um, horrible things about me. Um, various things, you know, I've been called everything from Michael Gove to uh, <laughs> I child, I think, as it was my best my favourite one. Um, but you know, you're just not prepared for the keyboard worries. You're not prepared for the amount of things that people say. The amount of twitters that came through literally was just bonkers. The amount of comments from people on YouTube is is crazy. The amount of fake. I mean, there was lovely stuff out there, wonderful, really nice stuff. And you know, I'm lucky to have some great friends and family around us, um, and people that we know, you know, through eSpark and various other things, who gave us all of the support and and were were, were thoroughly supportive. But what I wasn't prepared for was all of this, all of the comments. And I, I'm quite a softy, so, you know, all of these comments, it was a bit like, well, hang on a minute, you know, that's not me, and, yeah. and various other things. And you're just not prepared for that at all. And it wasn't, it was more to do with the actual noise rather than the traffic. So yeah. the amount of interest that you get in yourself, and it's great because you put yourself in it and you've got to do it, you know, so you've got to expect it. But I just wasn't, I, I, I'm much more prepared for it now. In fact, I wish I could do it again, truth be told. Um, but yeah, it was the amount of noise that you get and the amount of comments, people, opinions that I wasn't really prepared for. Right. Uh, how about you? How about you, Martin? How did how did yes. it you when it when it aired? Yeah. So really, in terms of consumer traction and traffic, everything that we did was in Amazon Web Services anyway. So it would have scaled pretty much exponentially. So we had, as you would expect, the best downloads that day that would that we'd ever had for a day. The best downloads that week that we ever had for a week. Uh, the day after it was broadcast, the people that bought Waibu sent us an email and said, come and meet the board. So it definitely ramped up the consumer side, the SaaS side, software as a service product that we sell into operators, and the investment side. Oh, okay. um, I think like Mark, I think you know the keyboard warriors out there, and there are a lot of them, will always take the opportunity to kick people when they're down. 
Um, and like Mark said, it's part of the backstory, right? Some people gave us a kick in, some people lifted us up. Horses for courses. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I guess, the, so we had, a, we had a question from Nigel. Um, how, how long is it after, you, after it's been filmed? And it essentially varies. How, what's, the, what's the gap between it being filmed and it being aired? Mine was four months. So four filmed months. in May. Yeah. Broadcast in August. Yeah. yeah. So Sarah and Mark, was yours about the same? Uh, mine was May the third, twelfth of May, and it went out uh, in September. Oh, okay, so so roughly about four or five months then. Yeah. The key yeah. is you can't control when they're going to broadcast no. it. So it no. could be a short period of time. It could be, I guess, up to a year, right? The other thing is, you're not supposed to be allowed to tell anybody. You got to, and for me. I can talk the highlights of a donkey. <laughs> I have to keep this quiet. I mean, Sarah knew about it because me and Sarah have been through the same experience. And me and Sarah spent a lot of time telling each other about our experience. So that was okay. So that was pretty good. Yeah, um, a few tears as well, I remember, Mark, from me. A few, yeah, we had, we had, yeah, there was quite a few, few tears and a few, few conversations we had. But, and, and obviously you can tell your family and various other things. But you get a phone call a week before, or I got a phone call a week before my episode was due to go out on air and they said right okay you can now tell everybody but you can't tell them what happened or whether you got investment but you can tell you can now start to publish it and then that's when we put something i put something out on facebook and we put something out on linkedin and we had a bit of pr and everything else and and that's when everyone was like oh my god i'm tuning in yeah. but i but they did but the week before mine went out at the end credits of the the previous one which was sarah's show they had a picture of like a really short snippet of me coming out of a lift yeah which basically sent my facebook into meltdown for more <laughs> okay saying was that you just coming out of the lift and going again <laughs> i think i knew a bit longer than that I, I found out probably about four six weeks before because right. we were, because the the um investors knew the angel guys knew right so they kind of tipped us off it would be going out in september so we had time to prepare a little bit and yeah. PR and stuff. Okay. But we couldn't then announce it until I think it's the week before. I think is it the week before, guys? We were told that we could send a press release out seven days, five yeah. days before. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Right. And um, so Manpreet um, has asked, um, did any other investment opportunities appear featured following the show? That kind of obviously new investors coming. Just go. I've seen you on Dragons Den. I, 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 whatever happened, I'm interested in investing. Did any of that any of that happen to any of you guys? Um, so yeah, so for us, absolutely. And as Sarah said, with a conversation with Peter, the the investment approaches you get after the show are about investing in you and your team rather than what you've actually done. But it definitely is a trigger to get you exposure to the consumer and the investment market at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Mark? You had any other interest that was kicked off from the show? Yeah, we got a few. Um, but we were we were kind of doing our own thing by then. We were we were we were very much you know let's let's do what we you know let's keep going at our own pace. Let's make sure that we can try and keep it between ourselves and and it, you know we had more of a team then. We were we were making some good traction. We were making some good headway. We had some good stuff signed up. So um, it, it, again, it, it kind of came a bit of a sideshow, really. Um, so we did get contact from investors, but we didn't ever really follow any of them up. Yeah. Because we, okay. were, we were too busy down on that. Yeah. So, is, so I guess, I guess moving, moving forward, um, what, what's, happened, what's happened since you were all on Dragons then? I guess if I keep on you, Mark, so you see I've got you in the middle of the screen at the minute. So what, what happened, yeah. what's, what's happened now after, after all your time, after the distance between Dragons then and, and now? What, 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 what did you learn? What's your kind of main takeaway? Um, so uh, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't change it. It was it was you know as I say I thoroughly enjoyed it and it is definitely part of our backstory now. And um, what it, it taught me a lot was it, is um, you know I suppose that you know you only live once you get one chance at everything give it a go. Um, and, and and like I say you know I did enjoy it and it's still part of us. Um, Quizbit itself now, I mean, you know, we've had nearly 70,000 people play it over the last few weeks, you know, so compared to where we were then to where we are now, 
is phenomenal. Um, um, and I'm not going to lie, I'd love to be able to do a bit of a Dragon's Den, you know, where are they now thing, and, 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 and hopefully I can do that in a few years. And that's not to, to you know, to, 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 to say, you know, they were wrong, but it's certainly, you know, a bit of a revisit and, and where we, you know, from where we were then to where we are now. Yeah. Um, and we've just always, always done our own thing. And, um, you know, we, 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 we do, we've got a lot of good friends. We've, you know, we've got a great team. You know, we built this from scratch. Ironically, we still uh, are done all this bootstrapping it with no investment. Right. So all through traction, um, we've done it all. You know, to a point now where, you know, we are very much self-sufficient. Um, you know, um, and we we we're growing, um, but we're having a lot of fun. We still enjoy doing what we do, and it's all ours as such. Um, but I suppose what's happened since then is is, is we've grown. We've, it, it gave me a little bit of a right. I'll prove you wrong moment yeah and again that's not you know not to, to knock them for what they said to us it was more to do that right you know honestly i can do this i know yeah. that this product will i know what i'm doing you know so therefore it kind of gave me that little bit of a i'll show you yeah and watch me go tight moment um, yeah. and i've still still keep hold of that i'm not letting it go really so i suppose that I'm, I'm quite a tenacious chap um and i don't give up really so it's kind of where we are i suppose so Sarah, how how about you? What 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 happened between now and and then? Yeah, I didn't get my happy ever after. It's probably you already know, but um, afterwards we had a really sorry. If you can hear any kind of noise, somebody's decided to start drilling outside the house. Oh, lovely. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, um, yeah, what did, what happened? Well, we probably floated too much stock, if I'm honest, with the hyper dragon zen and what would potentially happen. Um, and as a result, we had an amazing Christmas, phenomenal, brilliant sales, record sales. We opened up this huge store and it was brilliant and everybody seemed to love us and we were chipping away at that stock. It was great. We invested in a new range called Pillar Fight Warriors, which is still going now and is doing really well across Europe. Um, and, and, it, and it really felt like, even though we'd had a bit of a knock in not getting the investment, and then we decided not to go for investment. We decided to fund it ourselves, thanks to Jeremy Medicroft, who I think is on here, and, and the BEF. We got a loan, and we thought, you know what, we're going to just do this ourselves without investors. Um, and, and things were great. We, they were going great. And then we hit the new year, and we hit what I believe now was like a mini high street recession. Um, and so what happened was we started by showing in the February at Spring Fen. We got loads of pre-sales. But as the months went by and sales the high street was massively declining and struggling um, and Debenhams got their, you know, their, their finance withdrawal. We just saw orders being cancelled and people consolidating and then tragedy struck and um, our guy who we were kind of in business with out in the Far East literally dropped down dead. Um, wow. But with it, yeah, took our money, took our kind of concept really because we went through an agent um, and didn't continue that on over there. So subsequently there was no, there was no, so the risk was huge. Although we thought we'd kind of managed that, we hadn't. So we found ourselves in a hole for about three months. We tried really desperately to get out of it, but it, the hole was just too deep. So alas, we went into liquidation. Um, so it's not a happy ending, but the happy ending is, I guess, I've come to terms with it. First time in 26 years, I've classed myself as failing. Um, I've kind yeah. of learned so much from it as a person. I'm now a business coach and advisor. I work out of University of Huddersfield and University of York and I've got private clients and I help start up early stage businesses under five years, just help them grow, um, teach pitching, teach the MBA pitching, do a lot of bits and pieces. Um, yeah, and it's great. And, and I guess at the moment, um, I've got a few ideas I want to develop, but I've just got to get over the, uh, get over the last one first. And I guess I'll always be an entrepreneur. It's in the yeah. blood. Even though no, I think absolutely. I said to Taz, who's on here, I'll have a blood transfusion and replace it all. <laughs> so Martin, how about, how about you? What's happened since you were on? Yeah, so we, we definitely didn't get our happy ever after. So um, our only investor, we had one listed PLC who invested in Waibu. Uh, the value of their investment book was devalued by an auditor. That meant they couldn't raise again. So they defaulted on the funding agreement to us. Part two of the Waibu story will be out on LinkedIn very shortly. We're just waiting for our lawyer to sign it off because we are going to court later with our investors, which is good and something that we need. Um, so we put the company into administration. 
I worked really hard with Paul for about three months to sell it to the best party who could take YB forward. That's Dixon's Car Phone Warehouse. They will be relaunching YBU with our help over the next four to six months. And you'll see more about that in the press alongside the court action. Paul and I have spun up another company, which is Bootstrapped, which is growing quicker than YBU ever did. It's just me and Paul. We probably will never have a team again. We're in a better place spiritually and emotionally. Um, yeah. Did everything work out for the best? No. Did we get a multi-million pound exit each? No. Have we built on what we learned? Absolutely. Will the new thing be successful? Yeah, we already are, to be honest. So we're in a good place. Okay. That's good. That's good, That's good to hear. You all, you all kind of got really different outcomes, but it sounds like you've all kind of settled with, with what happened. One of the questions... Well, we all came out with a, an outcome, didn't we? An Definitely. outcome. Yeah, whether it was what yeah. you wanted at the same exact time or not. Either. So we've got a yeah. really good question from Natasha. Um, which and I guess there's two parts to this is I guess sticking with you Martin is would you do would you do it again is the first part and also that and that's for you personally but if if somebody came to you and said you know what I want to go on Dragon's Den what would be your answer um so I, w I would do it again um I think hindsight's a brilliant thing I I do it again knowing what I know now but I do it again anyway with no change to the outcome now, for, for better or worse, whether it's infamy or, or fame or just, you know, I'm in the public spotlight, people do know me. And I had a big network before I went on Dragon's Den, but my network is fucking huge now. So, yeah, absolutely, I would do it again. Would I advise anybody to go on Dragon's Den? Uh, no. So I would say there's a point between you thinking it's a good idea and actually doing it. And that is sitting down with someone like Sarah, probably, who now does this stuff for a living and can really get into the grains of your business to understand whether that is the best thing for you to do. Because you might think it's a great idea, but there are multiple facets that you have to investigate, which will spin out other options for you before you make that dragon's decision. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, how, how, about, how about you? Same question to you. Um. I, I, I probably would do it again because um, I did enjoy it and it was, um, you know, it's good fun. As I say, it's, um, it's part of us now. Um, I'd be in a much better position to do it now because I've got a fantastic team, you know, behind, behind us and, and, and all of which, of who, you know, work really hard for us and, and, and understand and believe in what we're doing. So I'd be in a better position to do it again now. Um, if you are, would I advise anyone to, to do it? I would say, yeah, I, to be honest with you, you've just got to do it. You've got to remember that what you're doing is a TV show. Um, that doesn't take away from anything, but you've got to remember that first and foremost, it is a TV show. Um, you know, if you're going on there for serious investment and if you're looking for it to use it as a, a tool to see whether you're investor ready or whether your business should be valued at X and Y, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it seriously, truth be told. Um, you know, take it as a TV show, take it as a PR exercise, take it as what it is to help you get your word out there. Um, but in order to be able to, you know, work out what your business is worth and have it as a serious pitch, then I would suggest you need to think about it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Same question to you, Sarah. Um, no, I wouldn't do it again. I don't regret it going on, but I would no desire to repeat the process. That's for sure. Um, um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, I think I've got there's too much about me now. I think I think there are easier and, and better ways to gain traction for your business that are not so time consuming. I would never I mean I, I get asked this question a lot in my job and I would never say no to anybody who wants to do it because I think you've got unless you've done it, you'll never know. And so it's like anything, isn't it? It's like your mum and dad saying, don't fall in love with that boy. They're going to be bad for you. Well, yeah. hello, <laughs> I married him. <laughs> so, you know, it's like at the end of the day, it's you've, you've got to try these things. So what I tend to do is I tend to have a series of questions I throw at the people I'm working with, which is like Martin said, which is, you know, what are you doing it for? And we really get to grips with what they're doing it for and what their values are around it. And, and once you can dissect that, nine times out of ten they'll come to the conclusion themselves which is actually it's not the greatest idea is it and then we go hmm, maybe not maybe we can find a different route forward for you but if you want to do it I, i've you know i've held hand, held people's hands through the process they've had pretty much the same result as me and i've gone afterwards never mind you know you live and learn it's, 
it's so it's it's risky. Whatever you do is risky, it is. It's a massive risk because you, yeah. you know you go on there. One, you don't know what they're going to put out on TV. Two, you don't know whether you're going to stand the test. And three, you know you really don't know what they're going to think about you or your business. And and that's not just the people in the den. That's anybody. So it's a massive risk. Um, and you've got to be, you know, well prepared for the fact that whatever you're doing, you're taking a big risk because you're putting yourself out there. Um, and it's not for the faint-hearted either. Um, so, uh, you know, you've really got to think about whether you, you're willing to take that risk. The rewards are great because everyone gets to see your product, everyone gets to see your product. And, and for a short period of time, you get a lot of interest in what you're doing. And then you, that, that, you know, grows as, as, as you grow. But, yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I think you just you just got to remember that you you know you're gonna you're gonna be judged when you go on Dragonstein. Whether you want to be judged or agree that you should be judged, you are going to be judged. Mm-hmm. So you have to be resilient enough to be able to deal with that judgment from viewers, keyboard warriors, people that want to kick you when you're down. And you've got to remember that you know that they there could be a personal impact that's negative, even though you have a business impact, which is probably going to be really positive. Yeah, you have to develop a massive resilience, that's for sure, before you even get to the stage where it airs. I was, I have to say, I, people were very kind online to me. I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages. And I still get messages now from people telling me how brave I was to say what I said. And um, I'm inspired by the fact I kept my business going even when I had the tragedy. Um, and, and every time it airs again, I get a phone call from the BBC or I get like it goes out and then you do the next round of Twitter again. And sometimes people can be cruel, but I think it, it generally speaking, like Mark said, there's more people that I, I tend to just attach more to the kind stories and the stories yeah. of people wanting a bit of help or support or just needed that boost themselves. Um, yeah, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So does anyone, have, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up in a second, but does anyone have a question that they've not, that we've, a burning question they've got for, either, for any of the guys? If so, can you pop it in the pop it in the comments, and I'll 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 ask. When does the bar open? It is Friday after <laughs> all. <laughs> it is Friday. It's, it's 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 gone past the time when you're you're allowed to open drinks now. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so no, nobody's popped a question in, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna call it a, call it a day there, guys. But thank you so much for your thanks, for, guys. to everyone you. for for your time, and thanks everyone for coming on. It's been brilliant and really really enlightening. Um, so it, this will be posted up on the YouTube channel. Um, as soon as I can get it up there. Um, yeah. Oh. See you later, guys. Oh, oh Ben's asked something, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Will you ever be able to discuss what sounds like a really poor audio on Dragon's Den, Sarah? He said. No, it's really funny, but this this week has made me realise I'm going to get my NDA out and see what it says because at <laughs> okay. some point, I'm hoping it's not endless and I can start telling the story. If not, I might write a book. Watch out, guys. Right, okay. there you, a book on the horizon. There you go, a, a book on its way on Amazon at, at some point. I, need a book. <laughs> I will, Ben. Thank you. I'll write a book. Mm-hmm. All right, that's that's great, guys. So I'm I'm going to call it a day now because other people, some people are, are dropping off anyway. They've got other calls. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, guys. And, uh, have a good day. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b